Apparently, I'm a little late to the party on some of this stuff, but when I saw this, I couldn't not make a video about it. In the last video, I said I was morbidly curious about this Gotham High comic. Well, strike that. I wish I could forget everything I know about it now. Shout out to Bounding Into Comics for posting this absolutely scathing article, which not only does not condone the cringe volcano identity politics on display here, but calls them out for the absolute bastardizations of the Batman IP they are. This is an article about an interview that Melissa De La Cruz, the writer of Gotham High, did for Entertainment Weekly. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but these are some parts that I found very interesting. The interview began with De La Cruz admitting that she has no clue about Batman. Well, she sounds like the perfect person to be writing a Batman book then. No knowledge of Batman. She states, My husband is a big Batman fan, so when DC called and said, We want to do a YA line, what character do you want to do? I wanted to do Batman. It's such a fun, iconic character that I could put my own spin on. Well, Melissa, the thing about characters who are iconic is that they're iconic for a reason. It means that the core of this character's identity resonates with people and transcends the traditional boundaries that other characters get restricted by. When you change that identity for no reason except that you want it to fall in line with your own politics and your own narrative, or as you said, putting your own spin on it, you've kind of erased all that. Your job as a writer is not to put your own spin on Batman. It's your job to tell whatever story editorial signed off on within Batman's world. And if it doesn't work, or if you can't find a way to make it work within that world without changing everything about the world, then maybe this is a story you shouldn't be telling because it's not in the best interests of the character. But to the shock of no one reading this article, you don't seem to care about what's in the character's best interests. After admitting that she has no clue about Batman, De La Cruz then details that her lack of knowledge doesn't matter because she's radically altering the character anyways. She admits that she knew nothing about Batman and didn't care enough to do her homework and learn about the character before she started writing him because she thought, I'm changing everything about the character anyway, so why bother? So she's flat out stating that she doesn't care about Batman and just wanted to do her own thing. So why even give her Batman in the first place? If she wants to tell an original story, that's what Indiegogos and Kickstarters are for. Why is she doing it with Batman characters that don't fit into this world of hers, and who the hell allowed her to do this in the first place? She explains, Bruce Wayne is the billionaire, he's the richest man alive, so I thought, wouldn't it be fun if his family was Chinese and from Hong Kong? That made it feel real. Well, no, you idiot. It wouldn't be fun because that's not the character. You may not be aware of this, since by your own admission you know nothing about Batman, but Bruce Wayne isn't f***ing Chinese. That's not the character. And when you make completely arbitrary changes to the character like this, it just proves that not only do you have no knowledge of Batman, even worse, you have no respect for him either. Made it feel real. Real to who? The thousands of fans who were reading Batman comics decades before you were born? The millions of fans who made the Batman movies worldwide phenomenons? You're saying Batman's not real to those people? How exactly does race bending Bruce Wayne into a Chinese person, changing the identity that everyone knows him by, make him more real than he was before? It doesn't. And I'm assuming that when you say, made the character feel real, what you really meant to say was that it made the character more like you. Which seems to be the only thing you were concerned with here. Snicker all you want. But when you're given an iconic character like Batman, you have a responsibility to present that character in a way that respects them and respects what they mean to people. But you're showing the character and the fans nothing but disrespect, and that's why people are pissed off. De La Cruz then details that she's basically telling an autobiography of her own life using DC Comics characters. Yeah. So why the hell did you give her these characters then? There's been a big influx of wealthy Chinese people who moved from Hong Kong to Arcadia in Los Angeles. That's where my mom lives. I'm part Chinese, my brother lives in Hong Kong, so I thought it would be great to put what I know into Bruce Wayne. I just wanted him to be a little more representative of my background and giving him an authentic family. She's not even denying it. Oh my god, the arrogance of this woman! She couldn't spell it out any more clearly. She's not even being shy about this. She gave no shits about Bruce Wayne. All she cared about was making Bruce Wayne like her. The problem is, when you do that, he's really not Bruce Wayne anymore. And then I hear the defense of, well, what's the big deal? It's an Elseworlds story, so anything goes. That's a bullshit excuse and you know it. 
There's a big difference between telling a what-if events had gone differently type of story that shows things from a different perspective while still respecting where the character came from, and just twisting the character into something unrecognizable because you don't respect where he came from. Speaking of no respect, take a look at this amazing panel from the book. Before Ma Sha Dean became Martha Wayne, she was the most beautiful girl in Hong Kong and from the richest family. Few knew that it was her money that started Wayne Enterprises. So it's not just Bruce you don't care about, you don't give a shit about the Wayne family either. What was wrong with Thomas Wayne building his family's company through hard work and ingenuity? Could you just not stand the fact that Bruce's money came from a white male? I guess so, because there doesn't seem to be any other reason why you'd change this. Now the money comes from Martha. Oh, excuse me, Masha. Because the only way these people can think to build a woman up is by tearing a man down. These things do not go hand in hand, you know. You can't have one without the other. Jesus Christ, the pettiness on display here is staggering. Alfred is not just his butler, but also his uncle. His gay uncle from Hong Kong. Yeah, because the term Uncle Alfred doesn't have a bad association in the Batman fandom, not at all. It gives this fabulous Crazy Rich Asians sheen to it. Yeah, that's not surprising, since it seems like Crazy Rich Asians is what you really wanted to write this whole time. So go f***ing write Crazy Rich Asians then! You wouldn't even have to change anything, just do an Indiegogo and crowdfund your own comic about a brooding Asian kid. He'd still have as much to do with the Batman IP as this shit does. That breathes new life into the character, especially in today's world since we're living in the most diverse world we've probably ever lived in, so it's more representative of Batman in 2020. One, that's bullshit, it's not representative of Batman at all because Batman isn't Chinese. Two, you do understand that the majority of the audience this book will be marketed to are white people, right? Do you understand that the majority of the people in this country where the book will primarily be sold are white people? I only ask because it seems like you're doing everything you can think of to piss those people off so they don't buy the book. And if you don't want them buying the book, fine. But don't blame them when the book gets cancelled due to low sales. When asked on what her inspiration for the story was, De La Cruz admits she wanted to reinvent Chuck Bass, a prominent character from Gossip Girl. Called it. She added, but making him Chinese was a no-brainer. From an artistic standpoint, the history of Bruce Wayne and Batman was essentially wiped clean. Well, then it's not Batman anymore, is it? She says her inspirations were Crazy Rich Asians and Gossip Girl. I can't imagine two things less like Batman. So just call the character something else. Just change the names and this is an original story about original characters. So why not just do that? It seems like that's what you wanted to do from the start anyway. It's not just Batman and Bruce Wayne that are being radically altered, but Joker is as well. Okay, I'm not even gonna touch that part. F*** this comic. De La Cruz then details the main focus of this story is a love story. She explains, I wanted to write about a young Bruce Wayne. No, you f***ing didn't. If you did, you wouldn't have changed everything about him. So obviously, there's going to be a love story. The Joker's pretty hot, so he's gotta be in there. Oh my god. In fact, there's an apparent love triangle between Catwoman, Joker, and Batman. This nut job does not give a rat's ass about anything. There's this feeling that they're the same person, just with different circumstances. I wanted to put that in the Batman-Joker dynamic. They're almost the same person, but Bruce has all this privilege and Jack has nothing. So not only do you know nothing about Batman, but you somehow know even less about the Joker. Almost the same person?! What f***ing planet are you living on?! Batman and the Joker are diametrically opposed! They're polar f***ing opposites! That's what makes their dynamic so interesting! That's what has made it work for decades! The fact that you don't even know that much and seem to be bending over backwards to go in the opposite direction makes me think that you're writing this entire thing as a massive troll job. Are you just pranking someone at DC with this shit? Like, hey, let's see how many issues of this crap I can get them to publish before someone fires me. It'll be hilarious. De La Cruz then revealed that she plans on destroying more characters. We have minor characters that we can get to know a bit more, like Poison Ivy and Harvey, and I don't think it's the last time we'll see Selina, Jack, and Bruce either. I'm hoping to do more of Jack's story in the second book. She even adds, and we barely even saw Robin. Yeah, sounds like Robin dodged a f***ing bullet right there. Second book! How many issues of this farce did DC commit to? Jesus Christ! Here's where the article gets really salty. 
It looks like DC Comics saw just how amazing and brave and stunning Marvel Comics New Warriors and Lucasfilm Star Wars The High Republic pitches were and wanted to get in on that. They wanted to absolutely destroy their bread and butter character of Batman and Bruce Wayne and turn him into Jake Man and Jake Wayne. It worked so well for Disney's Star Wars sequel trilogy, but they couldn't just stop at Batman. They decided to eviscerate Joker and Catwoman as well and have plans to do more. Circling the drain might be an understatement. This book deserves to be immediately shredded and then flushed down the toilet. Couldn't have said it better myself. I love how this article is just dripping with contempt. They're not giving Melissa De La Cruz a f***ing inch because, frankly, that would be a lot more than she deserves. So basically, we have a feminist SJW who comes off like the most arrogant, self-absorbed narcissist I've ever seen with no knowledge or respect for the Batman IP who, for some reason, was handed a Batman book and given free reign to do whatever the f*** she wanted with it. And then she proceeded to race Ben, Bruce, Alfred, Martha Wayne, probably Selina Kyle too by the looks of it, make Martha the real person behind Wayne Enterprises, which presumably means that Thomas was just some guy who took credit for it or something, completely changed all the characters in their relationships, made Alfred gay because more representation, pulled inspiration from the most inexplicable sources imaginable until it feels like... Well, I don't know what the hell it is, but it's sure as hell not Batman, YA or otherwise, and that's the problem. Why do these lunatics do this? Why do they feel the need to bastardize, tear down, and destroy everything that people love? Ryan Johnson, Chris Chibnall, Alex Kurtzman, Melissa De La Cruz, they're all the same. The only difference in this case is that this, thankfully, is not a canonical story. It's some YA Elseworld bullshit so it can just exist in its own bubble. But the fact that it exists at all is very troubling. Because if they greenlit this piece of shit, it's just gonna make it easier for more insulting garbage to get its foot in the door later on. But with any luck, that will depend on sales. And I can't imagine this thing will get many of those, since it doesn't seem like it was meant to appeal to anyone except the writer. How the hell did this happen to the comics industry? I don't know. But when we come out the other side of this health crisis, the economy is in a much different place, and local comic stores are sadly much fewer in number, maybe, just maybe, Marvel and DC will start having second thoughts before they publish unsellable trash fires like this. Until then, I'm gonna go read some X-Men back issues from the 90s. This book and peace out.